Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. He's just another Democrat DOJ dog. So we're talking about Jack Smith, you know, the media loves to portray this guy as a neutral prosecutor. He's got no dog in the race whatsoever, definitely not partisan, but he's obviously DNC paid muscle. And the more access to the facts of this case that we receive, the more we analyze, the more we realize that that is in fact the case. Folks, we're getting reports, I'm not going to say that this is happening absolutely, but we're getting reports that a good chunk of Jack Smith's classified documents case could get thrown out because of a procedural error. This report is coming from Real Clear Investigations, that's Real Clear Politics, not some rinky-dink fake news outlet on Twitter, but honestly, whether or not the case or certain elements of the case get thrown out, completely irrelevant here. The bigger picture continues to show one thing, that Jack Smith is biased in promoting narratives through his indictment rather than focusing on the actual facts of the case, and of course the overarching meta theme here, just how ridiculous and illegitimate these indictments are, you know, just adding on to the pile, showing how corrupt this abuse of power truly is. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, take a look at this headline right over here from the conservative brief. Jack Smith's documents case against Trump in danger of being tossed. Special counsel Jack Smith's classified documents case against former President Donald Trump is likely to be tossed out in large part or in full because of a procedural error, according to investigative reporter Paul Sperry. The Real Clear Investigations correspondent cited unnamed legal insiders in an ex-platform post writing, developing legal insiders say Jack Smith's USC 1001 false statement charges against Trump will be tossed since Trump was never even interviewed by a federal agent. Also, Sperry intimated that Smith's case is not built on substantial evidence, but instead relies on largely inflammatory rhetoric meant to sway a jury. Jack Smith's January 6 indictment of Trump repeatedly lies on a fuselage of subjective, even inflammatory language, devoid of underlying facts and evidence to appeal emotionally to jurors, including fraudulent slash fraudulently, false slash falsely, fake and sham, he wrote in another ex-post. Sperry also claimed that Smith's case relies in large part on an emoji. Jack Smith's Mar-a-Lago obstruction case against Trump is based on an emailed emoji related to security camera footage that was never actually destroyed according to legal insiders. Part of Jack Smith's case against the former president has already been tossed. U.S. District Judge Aileen Cannon of the Southern District of Florida, a Trump appointee who was overseeing the case, invalidated two of Smith's sealed filings early last month. Kyle Cheney, a senior legal correspondent for Politico, wrote via X, Judge Cannon comes out swinging at special counsel this morning, striking two of prosecutors' sealed filings and demanding an explanation of the legal propriety of using an out-of-district grand jury proceeding to continue to investigate the Docs case. So it seems like in this case specifically, which they're pursuing in a Florida court, a lot of, let's call it, prosecutorial mistakes or possibly misconduct is being identified and elements of Jack Smith's case are being shot down one after another. Supposedly the next big mistake, as Jack Smith is trying to charge Donald Trump over false statements, supposedly this charge is to be tossed since Trump was never even interviewed by a federal agent. So who exactly was he making these false statements to? You know, I probably couldn't explain the actual legal theory behind this potential issue, but I'll take Paul Sperry's word pretty much any day of the week. The guy's an absolute ace and he hasn't let us down as of yet. But the second part highlighted by Paul Sperry really shows Jack Smith for who he is. Continuously using words like fraudulent and fraudulently false and falsely fake and sham, using these words as if they're determined facts, accusing him of fraudulently doing something with no underlying facts proving that what Donald Trump did was fraudulent or that his claim was false. Most of it is actually subjective. You know, if you look at all of these cases, they're all totally subjective. It's not black and white at all. Donald Trump is being accused of fraud or fraudulently presenting, let's say, an idea or a document, Georgia case, for instance, but there's no real way for the prosecution to prove that Donald Trump is engaging in fraud, engaging in a sham or in false statements or knowingly false statements, because it's all entirely subjective. You know, it's pretty hard as a prosecutor to prove what the defendant was thinking, presenting to the jury what the prosecutor subjectively believes the defendant was thinking at the time of the supposed crime, rather than actually presenting facts of what the defendant was actually thinking and doing. The whole case is built on a subjective web of assumptions and lies. Paul Sperry accuses Jack Smith of trying to emotionally appeal to jurors, which is a little bit ironic because now little pathetic Jack Smith is attacking Donald Trump saying that his daily statements threaten to 
prejudice the jury pool in Jack Smith DC case. Jack Smith and his team of prosecutors are supposedly worried about the statements that President Trump releases on a social media platform regarding this case. For instance, just yesterday, President Trump released this message right here on Truth Social, referring to Jack Smith as being quote unquote deranged. And so Jack Smith is making the argument that this case needs to go to trial ASAP before the jury pool in Washington DC gets contaminated after reading too many posts from Donald Trump. By the way, important distinction, Jack Smith is complaining that the jury in the case in DC in the District of Columbia could potentially be tainted by Donald Trump simply posting things online, you know, making daily statements. What an absolute piece of work. This guy has actively attempted to sway the jury the same way that they're doing in Georgia. And he has the audacity to claim that Donald Trump's public statements, Donald Trump's free speech, is threatening to prejudice the jury pool. Yeah, you know, I might be inclined to fall for that bogus argument if I was a complete moron. As if a DC jury can be tainted in Trump's benefit. Give me a break. 64% of DC residents would find Trump guilty before a trial even begins, and only 8% would find him innocent. How is this fair? Yeah, that's a great question. A recent poll conducted by Emerson College found that 64% of DC residents questioned would simply find Donald Trump guilty without even knowing the facts. A real fair process, huh? I don't ever want to hear anything about a prejudiced jury pool from the DOJ prosecutor bringing a highly political case against a Republican in 90 plus percent Democrat stronghold DC. And now he's essentially making the argument that it's inappropriate for Donald Trump to be speaking his own mind on the case. A man with his back against the wall fighting for his freaking life He's saying that guy shouldn't be allowed to speak and defend himself publicly because he might convince jurors that he's innocent or that the whole thing's a witch hunt. Go F yourself. There's no other way to react. These people are sick, legitimately sick. None of this is legitimate. For me to even give a slight benefit of the doubt, the grand jury proceedings that led to these cases would have had to been conducted literally anywhere but Fulton County, DC, and Manhattan. These cases are obviously biased, one-sided, subjective nonsense, and if all the evidence that we've seen isn't enough to prove that, if the general circumstance isn't enough, then I'd argue that all of these Democrat prosecutors and Democrat judges pushing as hard as they are to make sure that the trial date is ahead of the election season is pretty much the cherry on top or the straw that breaks the camel's back, whatever metaphor you want to use, you know, the last piece of the puzzle showing the whole picture. And my hope is the the more this nonsense plays out, the more this theater plays out in the public, the more people start to realize just how garbage these indictments truly are. It's a bunch of trash led by a bunch of evil goons. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. Some good news, some bad news. The good news is the Mar-a-Lago case in Florida is likely to fall apart. The bad news is the rest of the cases are going to be tried in major Democrat strongholds, but we'll follow every step of the way, obviously, and we'll expose all the lies and all the corruption. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.